Hi, today I want to show you how you can build dynamic tabs in WIST and Webflow. So let's get right started into that. So let's first go into the Webflow build and let's start with the whole structure of it. So we have this tab wrapper, which is just a div block, and we're going to apply a class of tab wrapper on top of it, as well as a data attribute of smooth holder which will be later used in a custom jQuery code to just animate that whole transition. And you don't have to code, so don't get scared. It's all pre-made. Um, and now we're going into the child element. This is the tab buttons. And this is just a div block with a class of tab buttons applied to it that will just hold the links, the tab links that are nested inside of it, and it will just hold them. And now we have the tab link inside of it that is just a button with a class of tab link applied to it in the custom data attribute. And we're going to apply a attribute of WIST tab button on it so that we can render them dynamically in WIST. And then we're just going to add a tab index of minus one so that it starts focused with this as the first item. And now, we're just going to go with a tab content holder. This is just the general frame, the holder that is styled that will hold the different sizes of the unstyled holders within it. So we get the smooth height calculated transition. This is just a styled diff block with some nice background color as a fade. And then this is where we actually have the content in. So we have this diff block that is unstyled just with some padding of class tab content in the custom data attribute. And we're going to add a waste um, attribute of tab item, item inside of it. And this will be where we will then set the visibility using some custom jQuery, because we want to also reduce the waste actions we're doing um, with some custom jQuery to then show the, the matching item for the selected tab. And now we're just going to have this holder. This is just purely cosmetical. And then we're just going to have the heading with a WIST attribute of tab item heading and so that we can set the heading of it. And then we're just going to add a WIST attribute of tab item paragraph so that we can set the paragraph inside of it. And that was it for the canvas. And now we just have a little bit of custom CSS to make sure that certain things are hidden like the content holder and the tab content when the page is published because we need to do some other side of the code to then just start showing them once the data was loaded from our API endpoint. And I will not be doing a video on how to set up the Xeno API endpoint because this is just using their CRUD endpoint. There are a lot of videos on Xeno's YouTube channel and of my good friend Ray Deck who saves my butt more than I should admit in this video all the time uh, on how to set that up. So there is enough already out there. I just want to get you started into WIST here. So yeah, so we're just going to set this up now in WIST. We're going to call our Xeno endpoint. We're going to configure that in here. Just put our Xeno endpoint group URL in here. Then we're just going to go to the requests. We're going to select our defined app as Xano. We're going to use our endpoint uh, path and we're just going to do a get call to get the data from our database such as this. And as you can see, we're going to load the data. Now, as you can see, we render the data when the page loads. So we just have a simple action that is an event-based action that when the page finishes loading, we're going to perform the request of tabs to get the data associated for our tabs. Then we're just going to start rendering the tabs. And we're actually going to render the buttons simultaneously as the related tab item. So we save ourselves another action. So we're just going to apply this to the button and to the tab content item. And we're just going to render the list from our variables that will contain, from our variable that will contain the dynamic data in here. And we're just going to use a V iterator to make sure to iterate properly through that. And yeah, that was the system part. 
Now let's go into the content part. So now we want to start with the tab content. So we have this tab content here. This is the tab item. And we need to set a data attribute of ID on top of it. Because if I click on Leon, which is the second one, we only want to show his related project. And if I click on Joe, we only want to show his related project, his related tab. So we need to identify them by ID. So what we're going to do is, let's go to annoy back. We just add an ID as a custom HTML attribute. It's a bit like an attribute you can add inside of the DOM element in Webflow. So we're just going to add that in here of tab plus v dot iterator plus one. So uh, we have tab one, right? So this will be button one, and this will be tab one, and this will be button two, and this will be tab two, and this will be button three, and this will be uh, uh, tab three. Yeah, I almost forgot how to count. And, <laughs> and yeah, this is what we're doing. This is what Webflow is doing on the back end. You don't know that Webflow is doing this, it, but this is how Webflow is doing it. But now since we're working with dynamic data, Webflow is just giving up on us and it's not allowing us to do that. So we gotta be creative here, which we are. We are, we're developers, we're designers, we're Webflowers, we're creative. So we just add this data attribute of one in here. So how this is working with the IDs we're going to set here using the custom data attribute is basically if I go to expand this in here, and you will see that, if I expand this again, or not, not this one, you will see that we have this ID saying tab one, we have this ID saying tab two, we have this ID saying tab three. So we're going to dynamically add those data attributes on top of the items that Xano rendered dynamically into our Webflow or slash with Canvas, um, to then set the visibility inside of some custom code based on those data attributes that are applied to this HTML components as you saw in the console log. So now we just need to set the heading. So we're just going to go to the first item, that's the original one. We're going to set the heading of set text, plain text. We're going to use our variable, the v.iterator, and we're going to use the heading. Then we're doing the same thing for the paragraph. You're going to do, uh, we're going to apply to the paragraph. We're going to do set text. And then we're going to do plain text for that. So we're going to do v.tabs. We're going to apply this with the iterator. And then we're going to do the paragraph. And yeah, that was the content part for this. Now we have to go into the tab links. So we're just going to go to the tab link. We're just going to set the text, plain text and we're going to use dot button to get the button name. And we're now going to add another data attribute of data target on here that will just be tap with the v dot iterator plus one so that we start from one and iterate all the way up. And let's just go to the console log again to show you how that works. So if I go to inspect, you see that I have this data target of tab one in here in the first one. And if I go to inspect elements here, you will see that I have this of tab two right here. And I have the same thing for Joe. If I go to inspect elements, I will have the tab three. So how our code is working, which we're actually going to go in right now, is this code you see in here that is in an event-based action that starts when a request finishes of tabs because we only want to start initializing the code after the data was configured in the WIST canvas because otherwise we will just have this only working for the template item and not for all the items that are part of the dynamic rendered collection. But what this code is doing, and this is what I was talking about in the data attributes, is when I click on one, it will show the visibility of the first item. If I click on two, it will show me the second item. If I click on three, it will show me the third item, and this goes all the way until a million, if you want to. So this is what our code is doing here. And then the code is also doing some height calculations, so we have this nice transition. 
but this is basically what's going on here. When I click on the first tab link, it's open the first, it opens the first tab item. If I click on the second tab link, it opens the second tab item. If I click on the third tab link, it opens the third tab item. And this has a data attribute of one, this has a one of two, and this one of three. So when the first one is clicked, I will show the one, the, the content that also has the, the one ID added to it. So when I click on the second, on the second uh, button, it will show the content that will have the second ID. And the same for the third, it will show the one that will have the third ID. And this is what the code basically is doing. And let's just really quick go over the code. So we're just using jQuery here. We're just basically going to do the function to set some visibility and do the switching. And then we're just going to um, measure the content and do like the height calculation in here and in here. And then we're just going to um, do that. Like basically this whole thing is just the height calculation with some visibility logic, which is just part of that. So we don't need to go too detailed about that. This is not a jQuery course, but then the other part basically is doing, it's adding an event listener looking for clicks. So when I click the first item, what this whole part is doing is when I click the first item, it knows the first item was clicked and we have this combo class on the one that was clicked. So when I click this, it is adding the combo class of active, which just adds a different styling on here. So we're going to do that. And then when it was clicked, we're going to go back to the one that was clicked, we're going to say, you know, two was clicked. And now this part of the code is making sure that now the animation starts and that two will be visible. So it is making sure that we're not going to initialize the tab. We're going to show the data attribute for two, basically, while doing the opacity and adding the active state on that as well onto the link. And we're also, even while doing that, doing the initialize height and doing the height in here. So this is the whole logic going on for this dynamic tab item with height calculation and with dynamic content. And yeah, I really hope that this helps you a lot. And if you have any questions about this or if you have any ideas for any other videos or whatever, just please feel free to put this down in the comments. I'm more than happy to help you with that. And yeah, you will find the whole, the complete clonable for WIS and Webflow in the video description below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your support and for all your wonderful emails. This really means a lot to me and, and all your Discord messages, of course. And yeah, thank you so much. And See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.